got to put it down. You know what time it is? Gunblade time? No, we did that already. Oh. New product time. New product time. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, okay. first up. Ooh, okay, I've got a lot of demos, so I'm gonna set up. What's this cute chip? I'm, just give me a second here. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to move this over. This is, it actually, it looks like just an LPC 810, but it's so much more than that. It's actually a DSP chip, and it's an LPC 810, which is a, a Cortex uh, M0, um, a been dip, which is like pretty amazing. It's got actually like, it can run at like 72 megahertz or something ridiculous, but it's programmed to be like a full um, synthesizer that takes MIDI in and then um, does high speed. It doesn't have an analog output. I don't believe it has a DAC output. I just think it's just PWMs really, really fast. Um, but it's good enough to do um, audio synthesis. So I'll actually show off the little demo we have. Do you want to do a demo on the overhead? Yeah, I'll do the demo on the overhead because I have this, this synthesizer and then we do okay, the yeah. lock. And then hold on, let me move this over here. So over here, it, it takes MIDI in, so I have to have something that sends the MIDI, in which case I have this Arduino here. And this Arduino is actually sending uh, MIDI commands um, over like serial basically because MIDI is, is serial and then it has some um, there's uh, some adjustment pots and some buttons that are connected to the Arduino that I use to control the MIDI messages if you have something that sends MIDI you can hook it up directly and then I just cooked it up to these um, powered speakers so I'm going to hold the power speaker up a little bit and I'm going to start playing music Four notes, but you can kind of <laughs> see the uh, the quality that you get from it. Um, it's actually really, really beautiful sounding. It's very uh, clean and crisp, and has a it's, it's very synth it's very synthesizery. But um, for a single chip, it, it's got a lot going on there. So if you want to build a musical instrument, um, I don't know. I think this is a, a really small, simple way to have MIDI in and then audio out. And I don't remember every single MIDI control that it can listen to, but if you check the product page, I list like it, it handles kind of everything, um, like like tremolos and and like glissandros and and pitch shifts and all that all that stuff that you'd want to do. Um, you can send it over MIDI. You can do it. So it's a cool chip. I'm really glad we finally have it in the store. Let's pick one up. You do need to get all the other circuitry if you want to build the full synthesizer, but the chip does all the hard work. Okay. Next up, um, we got these soundboards. Okay. What's going on with these soundboards, later, you know? This is the Soundboard Mini, which is the, the, the smallest soundboard. We have a couple other soundboards that we've made, and these are all-in-one um, music makers. I don't have a demo for this one. I'm going to have the demo next week probably because uh, I, I ran out of time today. But it has on it a VS1000 chip that can decode um, stereo, wave, or aug vorbis at like, any quality um, very easily. And I also put on a little flash chip. And it has a USB interface. You just plug it into your computer. And then it has a 16 megabyte or 2 megabyte hard drive basically built in. You don't have to use an SD card. Um, you drag the files over and then you can trigger them either with pins by there's eight, eight inputs and you can trigger them and by naming the files you can create different types of triggers like loops and you know repeats and um, you know press and release and all the different kinds of triggers that you'd want from a, a sound effects board. Uh, it's very popular. This one has eight triggers compared to the other ones but it's a lot shorter instead of having um, the extra three triggers and audio amplifier headphone amp. I just made it compactor. Um, so you just see it has the main chip and the memory chip um, kind of down here. Um, otherwise, the software is the same. And then um, I finally got around to documenting <clears throat> the UART interface. So you can also control it using an Arduino or similar microcontroller that has 3-volt or 5-volt logic. You can send it UART commands to play and pause and uh, list files, you know, basic stuff. So if you don't want to use the pin triggers and you're willing to use a microcontroller, you can also control it over UART. So that allows for more precise control. Like, you, we don't have the pausing, pausing capability if you use the pin triggers because it's just like... you. Pin, you know, you press it, it plays, you release, it stops. It's, you know, we used it for the um, sound cup because it's great for just like, you know, have something turn on and it just plays in a loop or it plays different files randomly. Um, but now we also have the UART control documented so you can, I have it with an Arduino and I'll, I'll do a demo showing how you might want to use it with the Arduino for really high quality audio. It's the nice thing about the VS1000, it sounds really good compared to. Um, sound, other sound generators that might use like ISD chips 
or um, you know DAX. This is like really high quality stereo audio. Like if you kick up to your stereo, it, it sounds as good as an iPod. Okay. So next up. Next up. New case. Ooh. This Yay. is a super cute case. And as always, um, you know something I'm really proud of. I'm gonna just before we. So this is our new Raspberry Pi A Plus case, and I really like some of the things that you've decided to do with your Adafruit company. Um, so Mike Dole is a fantastic designer, and he is normally someone who, the name isn't on the things he make, it's so, someone else's brand or something. He's one of the best industrial designers in the world. And so on the case, it says, Design for Adafruit Industries by Mike Dole. That's right. And I thought- He designed it. And then it was cool because he <clears> would <throat> send us the STL file. We'd 3D print it, do fit tests, and like just change decisions on like, you know, oh, should the slot be over here or tuck this in or, you know, how should the micro SD slot work? And, you know, we did, um, we did like about half a dozen revisions back and forth, which meant that when we did go to injection mold production, because getting injection molds are expensive. It's like $15,000 to get injection mold made. So we have to make sure that the design's really good and that people will really like it. I mean, a lot of um, times that you don't see injection molded cases, we go with acrylic is because, it, we can't justify the $15,000 cost. And also, even after that, you might have revisions or changes to the design, which can cost thousands of dollars if you don't get it like 100% perfect the first time. Um, but this case, uh, this is basically a lot like the B plus case. Um, Mike Dole did a beautiful job. We have the classic case now, which is the gray smoke bottom with clear top, which I think is kind of the most neutral colored case. But coming soon, we're going to have also um, and translucent purple and blue and red and orange and green and other colors. So if you think that this kind of neutral color is, is boring for you, um, please hold tight. In a couple days, we will uh, have the rest of them in the store, um, and you can mix and match colors. But meanwhile, I'll, I'll demo this on the overhead. Yeah. So let's go to the overhead, and I'll show this off. Um, so this is the uh, hold on. this is the A plus case, and so uh, the A plus is smaller than the Raspberry Pi. Um, B plus, and so it doesn't have this section over here with the Ethernet and USB ports. There's only one USB port, um, and uh, the case just basically fits, snap fits in. Um, there's the GPIO header connections, um, the USB connection over here, uh, HDMI, micro USB, and headphone out, all cut out. Um, there's a little slot here that you can use to push and push out the micro um, SD, and then when you close it, we have um, two slots and a cutout. Well, one, we have a slot over here. So if you have a, a, a <clears throat> cobbler cable um, coming out, um, you can uh, have it come out of the side of the case, and it like is very beautiful and easy to use. I think we oh, can you go to this photo it's really fast? Which one? This one? Yeah, sure. So you can see like that. It, it can come out of the... Um, yeah, we're going to... I don't know. Whatever. Just over around. If, if you can. You want that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. The gunblade down, lady. To stop pointing the gunblade at me. Okay, sorry. Uh, so you can see the HDMI, uh, sorry, the, um, the GPIO cable can come out, but then we also have slots in the top. Um, I can't go to that one. And um, you can see you can also have um, the camera cable come out the top. So we have a camera cable slot, so the camera cable comes out. It's a clear case, so it's hard to see the slot. And there's also a slot for the display. Um, cable when uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation releases display information or specifications, um, you'll be able to use that. So I think this is just a super cute case. Um, hats fit in it. It's the same height as the B Plus case. So it's designed for um, any of the hats that plug in, you know, they fit inside of the body. You can take the top off or you can keep it on. If you have like a TFT or something, you can see through it. I like the A Plus. I like the low power. I think A Plus is a really, it's, low it's, power, it's, it's really nice. nice. I think the low power and the small size, I mean, it's just like really cute. Yeah, tw like 20, 20, something, bucks, 20 yeah. something bucks and you get a tiny Linux computer that can do almost anything. And then we, now we have a case. This is so cool. Um, yeah, I, I like the A Plus. I, mean, I think we're going to see a lot more stuff with it, especially yeah. now that there's like the hat standard. And also, um, you know, there's the Pi 2, which is the B Plus shape. But I, I have a feeling that they're probably going to backport that design to the A plus and have a yeah, Pi maybe. 2 A. Which yeah, we will don't be know. the same size. I, I mean We don't know. I we, don't know. We just know they release stuff and then uh, we adapt. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I don't think we I think we didn't demo this last week. Can I just show it off real fast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave a couple extra minutes for questions then. Okay. Okay. And so then you uh, want to show Yeah, finally 
We have. Um, Are you didn't put them in your problem? I think we didn't have them in stock last week, and so that, that's why it's a little confusing. But we have now, and I will turn this on. Um, hold on, just one second. What I kind of. What are you trying to do? I'm kind of trying to light this without <laughs> lighting it. No, I can't do it. Fuck it. All right. So, uh, <laughs> shush. We've got kids watching. Why would I say something like that? Um, we have our uh, seven-inch. Um, 1040 by uh, sorry 1024 by 600 display and we now have it with a little touch board as well so there's a touch overlay so you can um, select and drag I had it open up scratch I'm gonna close that out but um, you know you can basically use this as a touch screen and you can see the touch detectors going off here and it works great with a Raspberry Pi um, you can use it with actually anything this is the audio board it also has audio capabilities so it's a, a nice little monitor. So if you just want a small seven inch display, but with fairly high resolution, 2024 by 600, it's not so bad. Like you can actually like do some pretty serious web browsing on it. Works with any Raspberry Pi or anything with HDMI audio. We have it in three types. One with HDMI only, one with um, HDMI, VGA and composite, and then one that has audio support as well. Um, I really like this display. I'm just adding more uh, resolutions yeah. and sizes. Check it out if you need to add a monitor to your Pi setup. Okay, and with that, that is new products lady. Good work. You Yay. do a great job.